Hello there and welcome to this 10 minute tech talk. Today we're going to discuss how you can use the X-Rite Exact to verify your dot gain or a lot of people call it TVI, tone value increase. It's, it's the same thing. Um, dot gain is a super, super valuable process control tool that I think every pressman should be using because what it allows you to see is changes on press, right? And you're able to validate or verify or sort of troubleshoot if a particular unit has changed. So when you see color shift on a press sheet, it's difficult to know, you know, when it gets too red, did cyan and magenta yellow drop or did magenta go up? Or, you know, what is the combination of things that change? If you are measuring dot gain fairly regularly and some scanning systems will have dot gain measurements on the color bar which is great because you're getting it basically shown on pretty much every scan if you need to be able to do this on a manual method I want to show you how we can do this using uh, the X-ray exact so I have the X-ray exact connected here to my um, laptop um, I've got uh, it running through this uh, emulation so that you can see exactly what I'm seeing which I think is kind of cool it's a great way to use for training so under the main window, we've got our densitometer tab. That's where we do most of the functions in measuring density, right? All the tabs that you have across the bottom are what's available if I swipe to the right, right? So if I swipe once, I get into the TVI. I've got the 5025. If I swipe again, um, I've got some other functions. I've got um, just basic tone value. So if you just want to measure your solid and then an 80 or a 75, you have a specific single patch you want to measure that's not defined you can measure that um, swipe again you can get sort of a, a gray balance CMYK which is kind of a cool tool um, go again you get LAB and lastly uh, you could measure a plate now what's available here is by clicking on this window shade by clicking once on here we're able to define what active functions our machine is going to use, this device is going to use in that specific window. Uh, density trend is also a cool one. I'm going to turn that on and show it to you. Okay, So we've turned on density trend and if we scroll down um, there's going to be some other things, trap, print contrast, things that I don't really find as useful um, when I'm using that. So these are all the other ones that could be available or turned on if you wanted within that you know, swipeability of that window, right? So we're going to exit out of this. We turned on density trend, which is, I'm going to show you how that works. We're going to click on the down window shade, and now we're going to be back to here. So let's take a look at, so now we have density trend on the end, I'm guessing, right? Yeah, so you can measure a series of densities and go across. I don't know if I can click all the way across. I don't think so. No, I've got to go all the way back. Okay, so I'm swiping through. It's going to catch up. I think we're on the right one. Here we are. Okay, so here's dot gain. Okay, so first I'm going to measure my solid, which is going to be a black. Next I'm going to measure a 75. Next I'm going to measure a 50. And next I'm going to measure a 25. Um, again, you may not know exactly what these values are, but once you have been calibrated and set up whether it be G7 or somebody's come in and done the plate curves for you, you want to write down off of that approved production sheet, that sort of sign off of that last sheet, what your dot gains were for each unit. And let's say these were the, what they were. So now you know that your 25 is, is a, should be a 16, your 50 should be a 25, and your 75 should be a 14. You can very easily find out if you start to see a loss of significant dot gain in your 25, if it goes down to a 12 or something kind of weird happens there, that's usually caused by water. pH levels and alkalinity and things like that. Um, I'm not a pressman, but I do know that when there's issues with the water, usually it's either too much or too little water, certainly you just see scumming at that point, it will affect your 25. Um, packing and too much packing will certainly pressure too much up on the, on the 75 side. So, you know, you want to maintain your press and have it consistent, and you want to maintain these dot gains. It may be easier for you to use just the single dot gain, so in that case, you just want to do a quick measurement of uh, 50 from time to time, right? So here we measure um, our solid, so it knows what that is, and then it doesn't care what you measure. You just have to know. 
So in this case, I'm measuring the 50, and this should come back as a 21 again, or 71. So here, 50, 60, 71, you just have to do the math in your head that's a 21, right? Because a 50 is measuring a 71. It's not doing the math for you, but you can pretty quickly do the math, right? So it's a, it's a, you just need to know what your press is, is doing. Let's look at the cyan. Now, I clicked on the wrong one. I should have clicked on the solid first, so it's going to give me an error. So I go back, click on the solid just to tell it that I'm measuring a solid. Oh, got out of there. Sorry about that. And we're back. Okay. So there is the solid cyan. It always needs a solid. And then we're going to measure the 50 in cyan. And that's an 85, which is about a 15.6, right? As I say, you know, anywhere, grackle, some things tend to be running around a 15 to an 18 on the CMY, right? The high side is 15. High side is around 18. The low side is around 12 or 14. 15 is pretty good, right? So that's saying we're okay. If you were running this job and the production, you know, we started to get to... Um, say a, a 75, then there's a problem. You don't have enough dot gain. There's a problem with that. It could be something with the plate, could be something on the press, but at least you know that that's the problem is happening in that unit because you can measure each unit. So dot gain is a really great way for you to evaluate and, and trend what's happening within the system. Um, another way of doing that, of course, is through the color bar. And if you were to use something like Chroma Checker or um, we have a Teshcon scanning system, closed loop scanning system, and we put a 25, 50, and 75 randomly across your color bar, you're going to start to see that beautiful bell curve uh, dot gain TVI uh, reference on every scan. That's the way to do it. That's the way you really want to be measuring dot gain is off the color bar so that you can be quickly assessing it. it being able to do this with the handheld is great. But stopping the press and making those measurements or doing it, you know, in between, you know, pulls, it's a little bit more work. That's all. Certainly can be done, and it's a great tool if you're trying to troubleshoot what's going on. I'm a great fan of, of the closed loop systems, and, you know, the Teshcon system is amazing. We've got another one from other vendors as well. Um, so chat with us about that. If you're looking at something to control your press, um, we do have access to the uh, closed loop color control system from Teshcon. Basically, it's going to integrate into any press, which is very cool. You could have an old Komori, you could have an old Heidelberg. You know, we just have to see underneath the console, and on about 95% of those presses, we can access the control center, and we can then send information to the keys via adding a new scanner onto that uh, press console. So it makes an old press super, super fast. You're increasing your make ready times. We're sending new SIP data to it. It's learning that SIP data. It's improving on how it's adjusting the keys and the sweep. It's a, it's a really sweet system. So if you're interested in that, give us a shout. Again, this is Angus, uh, another almost 10 minute tech talk today with just over eight minutes. And I hope you enjoyed it. I look forward to seeing you in another video. Thanks a lot. Bye.